Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be connecting up these Weiss 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. So if you want to purchase these batteries or any of the accessories I use, I'll put a link below in the description. And if you use those links, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I'm not an expert in this. I'm just sharing my experience. Before you parallel your own batteries, you'll want to do your own research. So I purchased these at different times. I purchased this in October of last year and February of this year. It's a couple months apart but they're both essentially new batteries. When you're installing batteries in parallel, it's really best to buy them at the same time, so they're the exact same age. But I think I'm within tolerance of this. Now I did put labels on them. It's a good idea to do. I mean, you can even write it in permanent marker. So these are 100 amp hour batteries. By putting them in parallel, we'll have 200 amp hours of capacity at 12.8 volts. And it may just shorten that to 12 volts. But when I say 12 volts, I mean 12.8 volts. Now, if we were to put these in series, we would have 24 volts at 100 amp hours. But if you have a 12 volt system, Doing this can give you more capacity. Now the continuous output of these is 100 amps. By putting them in parallel, we double that to 200 amps. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove these straps, at least just temporarily, I'll probably put them back on. Or maybe I'll just flip them to the side. So I've charged these batteries up. Let's check the voltage on them. You want these both charged up. You want the voltages approximately the same. So we have 13.82, 13.81. When you connect these together, they will equalize to each other, but you want them close to start. So let's push these aside and look at what we're going to use to parallel these. So this is a four gauge copper cable. Here it says welding and battery cable. Now this is a short distance we're bridging here. If we were going a longer distance, we'd want to use a thicker cable, but this should be able to handle 100 amps over this distance. Now one thing to consider is that I said when these are together, we can output 200 amps, but there should only be 100 amps crossing this bridge here because it will derive 100 amps from this battery and then get the other from this battery. So these are five foot cables. There's some extra length there. So to attach these to the terminals, and these are eight millimeter terminals. They're eight by 1.25. I got this terminal kit. It has 10 four gauge terminals, five sixteenths inch. So five sixteenths inch equates to eight millimeter. Let's open that up. So we have 10 terminals, then we have heat shrink in red and black. So these are copper terminals. We're going to strip this back, place this in here, and then we're going to crimp it. To crimp it, we're going to be using this tool. Uh, this is a sort of low end crimper. The higher end ones are hydraulic. This here will lift up on, it's spring loaded. We'll put the lug in here. We'll hammer on here. And you want to hammer until you hear kind of a tone change. That way you know it's completely crimped. I have some other tools off to the side here. So let's measure this terminal. So we'll be able to push the cable into probably right about here. Let me try and get a good measurement. So it looks like it'll be right around 13 millimeters or a half inch that we'll need to strip off the end of this. So I want to measure this distance here. Now this is a charged battery. I'm using a tape measure. I wouldn't want to measure like this because I could potentially short these out, but this should be no problem on this side. So those are seven inches. Now I want a little bit of slack there. I'll go with seven and a half inches. That way if I screw something up, I can cut some off, but I want to keep this pretty short to minimize losses. So I'm going to look at the ends here, make sure they're good. That's a nice clean cut. I'll measure this out and mark it. Now you don't need to do all the measuring and marking. You could just cut it. Okay, so I have some cable cutters. I'm gonna hold this up to the battery and make sure, okay, that looks good. So I'll cut on my mark. And you want to do a nice square clean cut. Like so, I'll cut a black now. Now I want to make sure I cut these as close as I can to the same length. And if I have to trim some off one later, I want to make sure I do it to the other. Okay, this one's a little bit longer. I'm going to cut that over a trash can because that will probably have a bunch of little pieces of copper. Okay, that's a little closer. And that was probably with intolerance. I probably could have used it, but. So now I need to cut off insulation here. Again, you don't need to mark this with a caliper. This is not that precise. It's just what I have here. So to strip this back, I'm going to carefully cut this with a utility knife. I'm going to cut from my line down. And then I'm going to cut around. Now you can get tools to do this and that would be better. I do want to avoid nicking the conductors. So I'll line it up on there and I'll just kind of rotate it around and I'll just score the insulation. So I have this open here. I'll just kind of come down here and I'll cut around again until this peels off. I still have quite a ways to cut here. Okay, 
Now there is a paper in there. I cut that off, so we just have the copper. Give this a little bit of a twist. I don't want to twist it a lot, but I just want to make sure that I can fit it in here. So that fits in like that. We want the insulation to butt up against the terminal. If we hold it here, we can see how far in it's going. I could maybe cut the insulation back a little bit more, but I want to try not to go too far. Okay, so I'll be shrink wrapping this. Now, oftentimes you'll want to put the shrink wrap on before you crimp, but this should fit over this later. Now to use this, I want a solid surface. So I'm going to set this on the concrete floor to crimp it. So let's cut to that now. Okay, so I have the crimper. I'll take the terminal. I'll pull up on the back here. And I'll place the terminal in here. And I want to get it flat. And I want it centered on the area I want to crimp. So I think that's good right about there. I'm going to place the wire in. Make sure all of the little strands are in the terminal, and I'm going to hammer on the top to crimp it. Now I'm using a drilling hammer. You want something heavy. Okay, I think that's good. Now as I was crimping that, I could hear the tone change. So we'll pull that out. And here we have our crimp. We can see the little X in there. Now we'll tug on that and it's not coming out. So let's head back to the bench. Okay, so here we have the terminal. I'll put the heat shrink tubing on here. So here we have the bolt. We don't want the heat shrink to get in the way of our connection. So I'll make sure I pull this down and I can use this bolt to gauge from both sides. And I could cut it off after the fact. They'll slide it up just a little bit. So right about there looks good. So now I'm using this pencil heat gun. You could also use a lighter, but we'll shrink this. So I'll rotate it and shrink it down. Okay, so there's our connection. Now I wasn't sure if these had glue in them, but I can see a little bit of glue seeping out here. So it's almost like a hot glue they put in these. So that will seal this connection and that will keep oxygen and moisture out of here so we don't have any corrosion. So I'm going to repeat that for both sides of these. One thing to note is I want to make sure this is flat and parallel to the other side. I don't want it twisted because then we would have to twist the wire to install it. And this doesn't twist a lot at this short length. So I'll get these crimped up and then we'll come back and we'll attach them to the battery. Okay, so we're here back at the battery. I have the two leads made. So I'm going to install these one at a time on either side of the battery. Now I'm not going to be putting a fuse in here you could potentially put a fuse in here. So you'd put a fuse on the positive wire. Now when you install a fuse, you're protecting the wire itself. Where you definitely want to install a fuse is on the positive side, close to the battery to protect the wire. So if I hook four gauge wire here, I would want to have a fuse size to protect the four gauge wire. But for now, I'll unscrew these terminals. I'll install the cable here. And I'll tighten that down. Okay, do the same to the other side. Now, if I've made this longer, this could potentially swing over and touch the positive side, and that would be bad. So I've tightened these with my Phillips screwdriver here, but I am going to torque these down. I don't know the torque rating for these batteries. For other batteries I've seen between seven and 12, I'm just going to torque them to 10 Newton meters. And I'm mostly torquing them so I have some consistency. So I'm going to use a 13 millimeter socket. There we're on 10 Newton meters and I'll torque these down. Okay, so these are all paralleled up. I'll put the caps on. So now this is ready to be installed. Now, that being said, I'm doing this on my studio bench. You really want to do this inside of your camper RV because I don't really want to carry it at this point. I, it could put stress on the terminals. So now we can charge and use this as if it were one battery. The thing to keep in mind though, is we want to use opposite terminals when we connect it up. So if we hooked up a charger, we'd hook one here, one here, or one here and one here. That will help keep these in balance. So here is a load, I guess you could call it. This is a 12 volt socket like you would find in a car. We could hook this up with the positive here and the negative here, and we'd have 200 amp hours of 12 volt. So you could plug a cell phone charger in here and you could charge your phone many, many times off a battery this big. I'm going to be installing this in my camper and I'll put a link below to my playlist and hopefully someday I'll get a video up on that. It is winter time as I film this, so things are going a little bit slow. 
Now we just paralleled two batteries. You could parallel more than two. I think here it says number of batteries in parallel is less than or equal to 10. In that case, your wires are going to be bigger. It's gonna be a little bit more complicated setup. The best way to do an installation like that would be a bus bar. So you'd have a copper bar on either side and you would jumper each battery to that copper bus bar. But if we added a third battery here, this four gauge wire would likely be too small because I'm sizing this to carry max current. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.